Well, everybody, we're back at it. Um, so people wanted me to show what I'm doing with paint, and I'm going to do something today that is going to make all the professional painters literally cringe. Um, they are going to be shaking their heads, going, what the hell is this idiot doing? But, oh, well, it works for me. So here's the car. As you can see, um, it's pretty well. Doors are off. Uh, the interior is pretty much stripped of the seats. Uh, so I can tape everything off inside. I've got the roll cage taped off because I don't want any overspray that gets inside. I'm actually going to tape off all the carpet as well. Uh, the car is pretty well blocked and I need one more coat of primer. And this is where it's going to get ugly. So I've decided I'm going to roll the primer on. Why you ask? Well, because to tape this car off, it's a major pain in the ass because everything underneath has got to be taped. Um, I don't have a booth that's going to keep the fumes from kind of moving all over the place. So anything exposed is going to get covered in overspray. I don't want to get that suspension that's all white, um, you know, with some blue on it or orange or white, whatever. So I'm doing all I can to prevent that. So I tried rolling this on up here. As you can see, it's kind of how, how they get the gray on there. I rolled this on. I blocked it out and went, wow, that works perfect. Now it's going to be a little hard around some of the edges. So I got a foam brush I'm going to kind of use for that. But you're blocking it all out anyhow, so why can't you roll on primer? Because then I don't have to tape anything off. I just tape off the edges. I don't have to drop the car. I don't have to tape off the engine. I don't have to tape off the hood. Uh, because when I paint this time, I'm going to leave the hood on. I'm going to lift the hood up uh, when I paint. Uh, because that way, when I drop the hood, so once I get the, the white stripes laid out, I'm going to lay this white out first. When I go to paint the stripes, I can drop the hood and then make sure my lines are perfect because I know the hood's right back where it needs to be. So that's why I'm gonna leave the hood on. I'm gonna flip it up and then bag the whole hood. That'll keep overspray off the hood and then bag everything else. It's gonna be probably a multi five, six, seven, eight hour job just taping this thing off because everything's gotta be taped off. Um, so that's why I'm gonna roll on the, uh, the primer. Uh, I know the pros are going, you can't do that, you can't do that, but I did it here and it feels good. I mean, it's smooth, it's ready. I mean, I could almost paint this right now, but I wanna get one more coat. A little more sanding right in there, it looks like. Uh, I wanna get one more coat of primer on so it all stays gray, so I don't get any blotchiness through the paint. Um, and then this thing is ready for paint once I block it out. So my goal is to prime this thing today or tomorrow, uh, roll it on, and uh, then from there, I'll block all that out. I could show you guys all that, but I showed you blocking before. Um, I guess I could show you some priming. Uh, you know, so you guys can all cringe along with the pros. So um, as I said, when you block off primer, not much left. As you can see, this was rolled on two good coats and a good chunk of it came off to make sure this thing is totally square. And now, I mean, it is, because this area back up into here was a mess. Um, I hate to say it, Factory 5's roof area back in there was just a, you know, there was a, I think it was a mold seam into here, if I remember right, and it was just a mess. So now it is just poof, perfect. Um, you know, you, this thing is just ready to go. That's why I'm saying one quick coat of primer on this, block that uh, quick, and that's ready for paint. And the sides are all pretty good too. The big pain of the butt was sanding all up into here, even though it's not really noticeable. It's all blocked out really well, as you guys can see. And then I got to jam it. Here's another question though. So I'm debating, you can see where the seats kind of tear up into the top of the glass right there. I'm gonna actually put a piece of aluminum over there because whatever I paint there is just gonna get tore up. So I'm gonna make an aluminum plate that'll just uh, probably just adhesive all over that with uh, maybe some 3M VHB tape. Um, and then I'm gonna leave this inside the gray so it kind of matches the carpet and then draw a quick sharp line here so it'll be blue from here over instead of into here. That's my thought. I don't know, good, bad, and different, because I'm definitely not gonna try to paint back up into here, behind there, uh, because try to paint that from inside, yeah, no thanks. So this way I can just tape it off right here and spray. So that's kind of where I'm thinking about going. But, uh, so I'm gonna get tape in here, tape this thing off. I gotta clean in between the windshield. That's another thing that's gonna make the pros cringe. I'm not pulling this glass out. I don't plan on pulling the glass out because you know what? I, I would be afraid. Um, I, I just, I know that a pro glass guy could get that out and do it back in no problem. I don't want to risk it. You know, I was very scared. That was one of the things I'd never done. And when my buddy Dave and I put it in, it made me nervous, but it went in really well. It looks good. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to cut it out and repaint it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to 
get paint down inside of the grad gap, and then eventually I'm gonna fill this gap. 3M makes a product to fill this gap. So then I can come back and tape this whole edge off, tape the glass off, shoot this. It's a rubbery black stuff. And you see it on some of the show cars where they fill that gap. I'll fill that gap up after it's all painted and cured. And uh, then you will never notice. So that's my plan. So uh, yeah, let me get taping and uh, we'll uh, keep the videos coming. So uh, step one, thanks. But the material transfer rate is way better. I used way less material in spraying because a lot when you're spraying, it's going everywhere. So material transfer rate is way better when you're rolling and brushing. Um, and what I use to do this job is I use some of these uh, Wiz, hopefully you guys can see this, premium foam rollers. And I think the material in there does start chewing them up uh, in the paint or the primer because they start getting really soft after a little while. So you got to change them out maybe every 20, 25 minutes. And I'm using these foam brushes here, which puts it on pretty good and even. And then for the guide coat, I'm using this blackjack guide coat right here, as you can see. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking that with this little applicator they give you and... Uh, you kind of do this and that's how you you get where you're going so that's what leaves this thing i'll show you how to block this out here even though i've showed you many times we'll show you with this so i'm going to put you on my head so i can use both hands so hold on here okay so now you're on my head um so i'm using a block and a bucket of water and what i do is i'm doing this in the garage without a hose so it makes it a little more difficult and i got a rag i rinse a lot um and then i'm just going to start you know doing my x pattern And usually I'll use a longer block, but I'm just doing this for video here. And then I could start uh, wiping this down. And I'll put a little more water on it, clean the sandpaper with my finger. Yeah, my fingers are pretty raw right now. And then, uh, but you can see the line right here. That's from the roller. So, And I'm using 220. People are going, oh my God, 220, that's too rough. Eh, if I was doing a dark color metallic, I would say yes. Uh, the blue I'm using, no. Uh, that's the nice thing about these light colors. You can get away with murder for body work and crap like this because the color is so light, it hides everything. Um, and I will go back over this. I'm just kind of working the, the material first quickly with 220. And then I'll go back through with 320. Once I get this guide coat off, put another guide coat in and hit it with 320. It should go really fast. So now you can see where it's almost gone. So the guide coat now is all removed into here other than a couple little low spots, which we'll keep working on those. Um, and then we'll just continue this whole roof line like this. I'm gonna get the longer block out though, cause that way I got a straighter finish. Um, but that's all there is to it. It's, it's really simple. Um, you know, up into here, the rounded surface, I'm using a foam pad and kind of work at different angles like that. Down here, I use the small block. You can, this here is all pretty well blocked out now. Uh, pretty close. Needs a little more, probably 320. And then I'll go back through and just kind of flash these areas with a touch-up gun and then block those out and ready for paint. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. Uh, so hopefully next time you see this thing, actually I will show, once it's all ready for paint, I'll show it masked off. So we'll do one more episode on paint, final paint. Uh, and I don't think I did a cut and buff on the hood because the hood has been, as you can see here, it's been cut and buffed. So, uh, you know, let's keep this one episode here. Uh, hit subscribe and we'll definitely keep them coming at you. So uh, step one, thanks. Have a good one, bye.